everybody, it's Marie Forleo, and you are here watching a very special episode of Marie TV. And you could probably hear a plane, because I'm here in Venice recording in my little Venice home. So uh, today is special because if you've ever had anything happen in your life that could potentially be traumatic, or maybe you're dealing with weight issues or relationship issues or financial or business issues and you've tried everything but you can't seem to break through, my guest today may very well have your answer. And my guest today, you can see him smiling here, very handsome, good looking guy, Nick Ortner. Nick, thank you so much for being on Marie TV. Oh, thanks Marie for having me, such a pleasure. So I'll just brag on Nick a little bit. Um, Nick is the CEO of the company, The Tapping Solution. He's also uh, one of the people who created this incredible documentary. I'm sure you're the lead executive producer of The Tapping Solution. And now today we're going to talk about not only what tapping is, but you're the proud author of a brand new book with the same name, right? The Tapping Solution. Exactly. We keep it simple. We keep the branding nice and easy. The Tapping Solution all the way through. I like that because I don't have to remember a lot of things, which I think is perfect. And uh, if you haven't had the pleasure of meeting the Ortners before, Nick is with us today, but Jessica is also in the business, who's his sister, and his brother Alex is also in the business, and I love their whole family. It's a family affair for sure. And they've been able to reach over a half a million people with EFT and tapping, which we're going to talk about more in a few minutes. But I wanted you guys to know the reason that we're doing this special episode today, because if you've been paying attention for more than a few weeks, you know that a couple weeks ago, Josh and I were in a pretty bad accident, and it shook the crap out of us. And I have just not been myself. Right now, I'm getting much better, but um, Nick has been a friend of mine for a while, and he was kind enough to send me an email and say, hey, Marie, do you want to tap on this? And I will tell you, my instant body reaction was yes. And even though I've known Nick for a long time, I've known Jess for a long time, I've known his family, I've understood what EFT was from a psychological perspective in terms of understanding it, but in, quite frankly, I didn't really have a need for it, nor had I ever done it at that point. And so Nick and I did a session, and it was so powerful for me. We were just talking about it um, before we started recording, and I felt like that literally the moment we got done tapping, I said, Nick, I have to do a Marie TV with you, and then we realized that his book was coming out, and I was like, oh my God, it's divine timing, let's do this. So uh, that's the reason that we're talking to Nick today, and I am so honored to have you here because I know what launching a book or launching anything is like, so you've got a very busy schedule. So um, again, thanks for being here. Uh, a pleasure. So tell us, because I know a lot of my audience knows about EFT, and they're probably jumping up and down, screaming, saying yeah. yes because they're fans, but for many thousands who don't or who may even be slightly skeptical or think, you know, what is she talking about, can you give us the kind of basic description of what EFT or tapping is? Yeah, we've thrown around these weird words like tapping, like are we going to start tap dancing in the middle of, which might happen in a Marie TV episode. Exactly. I mean, you never know, right? Uh, well, we call it tapping. Another name is EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. That's the kind of tapping we're doing. And we call it tapping because we're literally tapping on these meridian endpoints of our body. I like to describe it as a combination of ancient Chinese acupressure, that's the tapping component, or acupuncture, fortunately, without the needles and modern psychology, because as we tap, we're saying certain statements, we're focusing on problems, on challenges, on what's going on in our lives. You know, for a long time, the discussion with EFT and tapping was about the meridians and the energy system and things that, Marie, you and I probably believe in and think, yeah, there's probably more to the body than we see. Right. You know, maybe there are chakras, maybe there are ancient systems that, but we don't see them and we haven't been able to document them in the way that we'd like to. The exciting thing is that the new research, the really Western scientific research, is also proving why this is working. And in a nutshell, it's showing that when we are focused on a traumatic issue, on an event or something that stresses us out, and your car accident is a great example, we can talk in detail about the process there. When we focus on it, we trigger the amygdala in our body. And that's that stress response center, that fight or flight response, that very ancient part of our brain that we're all very familiar with either from traumatic events or from daily stress, you yeah. know, that where it's triggered and we feel it in our body. So we trigger the response and then we do the tapping and the tapping has been shown through scans and a bunch of other research to actually send a calming signal to the amygdala. We're doing the tapping and the tapping is saying, it's safe, you're safe. And that's why we can retrain, rewire the brain to act and react differently. To be able to think about something that happened a week ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, 
If you're still stressing this out when we think about it today, do the tapping and then think about it differently and let it go and actually move past it. I mean, that's really, to me, the power of this technique, that it goes beyond positive thinking, which I totally believe in. Yeah. It goes beyond talk therapy and psychology, which can serve a role, yeah. to actually physically, in the body, clearing through these events, emotions, traumas, etc. So exciting. So I know because um, I was lucky enough to get an advanced copy of your book, I know a little bit about your history, but can you tell us the, like, the short version of how you even stumbled upon this? Because you don't strike me as the kind of guy who was like necessarily flying off to Asia or you know doing acupuncture work. Not that you wouldn't do that stuff, but I'm just well, curious. I have a doctor in acupuncture. <laughs> you. Uh, you know, it, you're right. I was living my life, but I was into... I think like a lot of us, it's like we, we had our job. I was doing web design and marketing consulting for a couple of years and then real estate. And then there was this other part that was just exploring things, you know, reading Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay and, and going to Tony Robbins events and yeah. just doing the self-help thing to find more ways to improve my life. I was yeah. always searching for a better life experience. Yeah. I kept reading about this weird tapping thing and it was like, all right, I mean, really? Like, let's be honest here. We're tapping. I mean, one point's on the top of the head. So now we look like monkeys. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I had the same reaction. I read about it. And, and back then, this was about 10 years ago, yeah. there wasn't the science and research there is today. So it was even further into woo-woo land. Yes. You know? Now it's getting a lot more grounded. But back then it wasn't. But I kept hearing so many stories. Somebody with pain relief. Oh, I had pain for 20 years. I did the tapping and it went away. You know? And you read these stories where people are in tears writing saying this has changed my life you yes. know I couldn't lose the weight I had cravings I couldn't control I always felt stuck in my business I was scared to speak in public all these things and people were getting over it so I read enough of those stories that you get to the point you go okay my cynicism just needs to go away yes. you know and I have to try it so I remember one of my first experiences it was really something pretty basic but I woke up one morning with neck pain and you know when you sleep wrong I don't know I don't know if you wrestle your husband or wife at night or what it is that happens, you wake up, uh, oh, really, you know, and it's not that bad, but it hurts, and all day you're kind of a robot because people say something to you and you go like this, yes. you know, yes. like, it's not fun, right, so I said, let me try this weird tapping thing on this neck pain, so I'm looking online and looking at the point and saying the statements, and next thing I know, it was like, oh my gosh, it's gone, like, just a total release, and Look, if all it did was work on pain relief, it would be exciting by itself, right? I mean, there's a lot of people watching who probably have some sort of physical pain. Absolutely. So if all it did was that, that'd be great. But what I really thought about that day, what, what that moment was so important to me for, is that I started to ask myself, okay, I woke up this morning with one world view, and it said, I have neck pain, I'm going to have this for two or three days, I can take some Advil, I can stretch it out, but that's just the way life is. Right. Now I do this weird tapping thing that makes no sense, at least on the surface, it yes. makes sense to go deeper, it makes no sense, and this pain is gone. So I started asking myself, what other parts of my life could I apply that to? You know, I think so many of us walk around saying, these things happen to me, and this is just the way I am. And I think one of the first steps in personal growth and development is taking that responsibility and saying, you know what, I'm playing a role in here. I have something to do with my business success and my emotional success and my relationship. I think most of the people watching this are probably at that stage where they've said, I gotta shape up, I gotta take responsibility, this is up to me. Yeah. The challenge is it's one thing to learn that, it's another thing to know what to do about it. Right? So you know, and that was my first experience, you know, Tony Robbins events fifteen years ago. I learned to take responsibility and I could will myself to do stuff for a couple weeks or a couple months, and then I go back and do my own same crap again, you know? <laughs> right. And it was like how am I going to change this? And tapping for me was my way to change that. To get to the real root, right? To the core events that happen. You know, speaking like speaking in public, for example, getting your voice out in the world, all these things that are so important. And I know that people watching now on Marie TV really want to do. Yeah. If you have traumatic events from your childhood, if you have stuff you haven't let go of, if you were seven years old talking in front of the class and the kids laughed at you. You can still be holding on to that, and that's precisely the thing that's holding you back right now. So my experience has been that, of just trying it for myself. I shared it with friends, with family. You know, the running joke was, don't say anything's wrong around Nick, because we're going to tap on it. You know, it was like... 
I have to interrupt because you, you know, you even said that to me, you sent me that sweet email and we are friends and you're like, I know, I don't want to seem like a bug here, but I really think we should tap on this Marine. It was so sweet. So I, I get that. I've heard to be less pushy 10 years later than I was in the beginning, but yeah. still when I see somebody in need, I'm like, uh, you know, our mutual friend, Chris Carr, she can tell you the story of we were climbing up a mountain and she has a terrible fear of heights, had a terrible fear of heights. And we're going up this mountain and she said, oh, there's... This tower up there with the view is incredible. You just climb to the top, and I go, oh, great, we'll go up there. And she goes, oh, no, I'm not going up. What do you mean you're not going up? Well, I'm scared of heights. And as soon as she, she said it, she tried to, like, swallow it, you know, because she knew she was done for. Like, she, and I looked at her, and I go, what, what do you want me to do here? Like, we're tapping on this. So, sure enough, and I actually tell the whole story in the book, but we went up the tower step by step, tapping on her fear and calming the body, calming the amygdala, and she made it to the top. That is so awesome. And, you know, um, one of the things I love about that is, you know, all of us have those things. And speaking, I'm shifting slightly here because you know how passionate both of us are about marketing. And one of my things in the world is, like, when you believe in something and when you know that it works and you're really out to make a difference for people and you're really out to help, that's really all marketing is. It's like being willing to share from a very honest, transparent, passionate enthusiastic place about something that you believe in and whether it's clothes that you're designing designing or you know it's jewelry that you're making or you sell information or advice or you sell houses it kind of doesn't matter but I think that's one of the reasons and again I know I'm shifting slightly here away from from the content we're talking about but most of our folks are interested not only in having a great life and, and healing themselves in every level but also having success and whether you have your own business right now or you work for a company you believe in I think Nick and I both share this belief. You have to get on board with embracing and loving marketing and understanding how to become a champion for your company or the company that you work for. And you just demonstrated it so perfectly. Like marketing is not something you do just when you're on your computer or just when you have your business hat on or you're working nine to five. It's like you were out with a good friend of yours and you're like, dude, this stuff works. You can't even open your mouth because I'm going to, we're going to do this right now. We're going to tap on this. So just as a little aside. No, and you know what? You and I know the successful people that we need, the people at the top of their game, they'll tell you. Most of them don't even know how they got there. They're just like, I've just been so excited about doing this, whatever I do, and I've been so passionate about it that that's what I got. That's how I got there. You know, especially in this day and age, you know, the strategies are there. The how to figure out how to do this is there. The inner game is such a big part of it. You've got to be congruent with your passion. You've got to be congruent with marketing, you know. I've been, the tapping sort of sits in that self-help, personal development, spiritual world that historically has had amazing information, but has been really scared to market, to build a business around it, to build a career around it. Has been scared to go, yeah, I'm charging money for this. And that's a big problem. It's a big problem. It's the biggest disservice that any people can do to the world. Yes. You know, like there are people really holding back their gifts. I mean, the way I look at it, you'll have EFT practitioners who do this. They get into it. They start working with clients. They're trying to build a business, but they go, I love what I'm doing so much. I'm helping people so much. How can I charge for it? Right. Or how can I charge enough for it? So they're charging 30 bucks an hour because they're so passionate about it and they're doing so much good work, which is so honorable in so many ways. But guess what happens? They can't support themselves. They can't sustain their business. They can't make it a viable life. So then they go back to their work at a bank as a secretary in an office because they weren't able to sustain their passion. Right. I mean, people, it is their duty to sustain their passions. It's like, it is your mission to figure out how to charge, how to build a business, how to make it happen and spread your good work. Yeah, I don't need I, to tell you. I know you know this. I yeah. know it's what you teach. But We're I know like, you and I are so passionate about that. It's like, come on, you know? Yeah. And I also do want to say too, because I can hear, I have that little psychic ability in me going, oh, that's all great for you, Nick. But I do want you to know if this is your first introduction to Nick and the tapping solution, you can just do a little Google searching and Nick, maybe you can talk about it. Um, one of the things that you guys, I love you for, and this is why we have this mutual admiration society is all the philanthropic work that you do 
with tapping. And I believe, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, the recent tragedy in Connecticut and the work that you guys have been doing there, I know there's the foundation. I know light is a part of it in Rwanda and you guys have done a lot of work there. So just for anyone listening, if your little spiny sense went up and said, oh, here are these capitalists wanting to make money. You have to know the other thing that Nick and I truly, truly believe is a part of having a truly successful business and living your passion, a huge part of that is giving back and doing it completely for free or taking a portion of the money that you earn. And again, this is just a value that we share and being yeah. able to, to direct that back out into the world in a way that makes a difference for folks who, who aren't able perhaps to afford certain Absolutely. services. And that all involves a good business model to make that happen. Yeah. You know, we've donated, I think so far over $350,000 to tapping related causes in the last couple of years. In that we've been doing free sales on the book. I'm donating 100% of my royalties during pre sales to a foundation in Newtown, everything, everything comes in, I'm donating. Why? Because it's so much fun. Yeah. And it's so needed and it's so exciting, yeah. right? Um, we might keep it going further into the book launch. I gotta do some math, so we'll see. So maybe yeah. when people see this, they'll see that we're donating even more. Um, I, I live in, you mentioned the work in Newtown. I live in Newtown, Connecticut, which is obviously, I think everybody knows the spot of the Sand Hook Elementary School tragedy. So on that day, you know, December 14th, just a couple of months ago, once I got over the personal shock of what happened and being so close to home, you know, I got together with my brother and sister and said, we have to do something. You know, we know we have a tool here that can help so much with stress and trauma relief. And a tool that's on the fringes, but it's not part of the Red Cross yet. It's not part of the existing systems yet. So we have to do something. So we each donated $10,000 that day. So we put up, we put $30,000 aside. And then we did a sale of our film where we donated all the proceeds from that. So we raised another $40,000. Louise Hay sent us a $10,000 check from my publisher at Hay House. She's amazing. All right, so we had eighty grand, And with that money, what we did is we, we flew in Dr. Lori Layden from California just three days after the tragedy. And her experience is working with genocide survivors in Rwanda. So she's done the tapping process with these kids who have gone through a, a tragedy that is unspeakable you know, what they've gone through. And she has shown how using the tapping they've been able to get their lives back together. You know, this trauma component is something that is missed in so much charitable work. You know, in Africa, most of the work is, first of all, about just food and yeah. giving stuff. Now it's starting to be smarter. It's about business and microcredit, microfinancing, all those things. But it's still, for the most part, ignoring the trauma component, yes. you know? And in the same way that we can't get on with our lives and our business if we have deep trauma that's going on, neither can these kids, you know. So we've been on the ground in Newtown the last couple months, and it's been, you know, definitely the most fulfilling work of my life. I mean, you know, I love what I do online, and you mentioned we've had the Tapping World Summit with over 500,000 people, and, you know, the business has 20 employees now. Like, it's, that's all great, but it's nothing like the work on the ground. Yeah. You know, and, and being able to work one on one with people and having these it's been a really neat experience because these meetings on a Tuesday night with eight parents who are having the hardest time of their lives and they're having you know, just can't put the pieces back together. Yes. You know, that interaction and being able to be with the community and just help on that level has been so fulfilling and we're continuing to do that work through the Tap and Solution Foundation and it's it's amazing. I I love it. So um so basically, for all y'all listening, again, you can Google. I would highly encourage you. Again, I started reading the book because I got the advanced copy. I haven't finished it simply because of time. We're in the midst of B-School right now. But every single word, Nick, I've devoured. I love it. I highly, I only recommend things that I love. So all y'all, there'll be links for the book below if you want to check it out and get it. That's what it looks <laughs> this like. This is my first hardcover copy. Yay. Yeah. And show us the UK version, too. This is the UK version. Awesome. Yeah. So it's funny, they like to do, I didn't really understand these things, but they like to do different covers in the UK. Maybe they like different colors. I don't Variety know. is the spice of life. So, okay, I know before before we wrap up, this has been so great, yeah. and you and I, I know we're going to talk more because I, I got like a million ideas just listening to you about other things we're going to do in the future. Um, can you give us a tapping demonstration? Because you taught me the other day, and again, I was, I'm, I got off the Skype call with Nick, y'all, and I looked in the mirror and there was like, black mascara all over the place and I came out it was so funny but Nick took such good care of me um, so I wondered if we could do a quick demonstration now so that we could actually sure. show people how to do it and then they can comment away and we'll give them that challenge absolutely so you know we can use the tapping for all sorts of things we used it for 
the trauma of your accident. People use it for pain relief, for food cravings and weight loss, for financial challenges. There's all things we can cover. The bottom line on all of them is that they all relate to stress in the body in some way, shape, or form. Back to that amygdala. When we tapped on the car accident, it was your amygdala that was fired up and it just kept running that fear and danger over and over. That part of your body that just said, I'm not safe, yes. you know, because of what happened. So we did the tapping to calm the amygdala. So I want everyone to just go ahead and close your eyes and take a deep breath and we'll get really grounded here. And just tune into your body and tune into your life. And just for now, for a few minutes of tapping, try to identify one thing that's really stressing you out. It can be a big thing or a little thing that just today happens to be getting you, or it can be a bigger picture thing. It can be something somebody said to you a week ago. Something that's stressing you out. And really feel it in your body. One of the great things about the tapping process is it helps us get in our body. Not just have all this head stuff going on, but where do you feel that stress in your body? Some people might say, in my stomach, it's queasy. Other people might say, I feel it in my chest, or it's in my head, or there's tension in my shoulders. So just feel that stress and that, about that specific thing, and give it a number on a 0 to 10 scale. 10 being the highest intensity, 0 would be, it's not there, so you want to do something that's a 5 or higher. And then once you know it, we're going to do some tapping on it together. Cool. Okay? So we start by tapping on the side of the hand, called the karate chop point. You can do one hand, you can do the other, whatever's comfortable for you. And just tap continuously. And Marie, will you be my echo? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to say some words and everyone at home, tap along and just follow after us. So tap on the side of the hand. Even though I have all the stress in my body. Even though I have all the stress in my body. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have so much stress in my body. Even though I have so much stress in my body. About this one thing. About this one thing. I choose to relax now. I choose to relax now. Even though I'm so stressed about this thing. Even though I'm so stressed about this thing. I choose to relax now. I choose to relax now. Now we're going to tap through the points. The first point is the eyebrow point. Right where the hair ends and it meets the nose. You can use one hand or the other hand. Or some people like to tap with both hands. The meridians run down both sides of the body. So whatever feels comfortable. And just tap five to seven times. Don't have to be perfect. And just say this stress. Right. And now on the side of the eye, it's not at the temple, it's on the side of the eye, next to the eye, this stress. So it's a little higher, Marie, it'll be like right next to the eye. There you okay. go, perfect. Cool. This, this stress. stress. This stress. And now under the eye, right on the bone, the stress in my body. The stress in my body. Now under the nose, all the stress in my body. All the stress in my body. Under the mouth, it's above the chin, below the lip, right in that little crease in there. It'll be like a kind of curl roll up in, so you can really get it. All the stress in my body. All the stress in my body. Three more points left. The collarbone point. Just feel for the two little bones of the collarbone, the ones that stick out. And you go down just an inch and out to each side about an inch. You can tap with all ten fingers. Perfect. All the stress in my body. All the stress in my body. Underneath the armpit, about three inches underneath the armpit, right on the bra line for women. And you can do one hand or the other, either side. All the stress in my body. All the stress in my body. Last point. Right at the top of the head here. We do look like monkeys, but what can you do? It's fun. It's fun. The stress in my body. The stress in my body. Let's do one more round. The stress about this thing. The stress about this thing. Side of the eye. I'm so stressed out. I'm so stressed out. Under the eye, and I'm carrying it in my body. And I'm carrying it in my body. Under the nose, all the stress in my body. All the stress in my body. Under the mouth, all the stress and anxiety. All the stress and anxiety. Collarbone. I wonder what it's all about. I wonder what it's all about. Under the arm. I wonder if I can let it go. I wonder if I can let it go. Top of the head, releasing the stress. Releasing the stress. Eyebrow, letting it go. Letting it go. Side of the eye, it's safe to let the stress go. It's safe to let the stress go. Under the eye, it's time to let the stress go. It's time to let the stress go. Under the nose, I choose to let the stress go. I choose to let the stress go. Under the mouth, I choose to let the stress go. I choose to let the stress go. Collarbone, releasing it from my body. Releasing it from my body. Under the arm, letting it go. Letting it go. Top of the head, letting it all go. Letting it all go. And take a deep breath. And we let it go. So that's what's called a couple of rounds of tapping. And after a couple of rounds, we always do the same thing. We check in yep. on the original issue. So it was like, 
you know, I was stressed, stressed at a level eight. Now it's a six. It's a five. The edge has come off. And then you can do more tapping with the same language, just clearing up. And then we also look for what else came up. You know, so because sometimes you're tapping about something that happened at work, and you think that's the issue, and it's stressing you out so much, and you do the tapping, and then there's another insight. And it's like, oh, it's not connected to that. It's not that. It's this. You know. Mm -hmm. And the tapping process is five, ten minutes, an hour, whatever you can devote to it. You know, a one-on-one -on -one session will often be forty-five minutes to an hour of just peeling back the layers of the onion and getting to the root of whatever's going on. That's so awesome. And I'm assuming, uh, I haven't gotten to that place in the book yet, but I know you have lots of examples. And do you guys include some scripts in there in terms of... Yeah. Yeah. There's a ton of scripts that follow along. There's a bunch of resources online that are sort of hidden within the book that where there's some free meditations. There's some tapping meditations with Jessica that, that are really popular because they help... They're, they're nice and calming and meditative, but you tap through it, and it really helps with the language. So there's a free stress relief meditation that comes with it, a financial meditation, a weight loss meditation. I tried to pack the book in with as many online resources as possible, so there's, there's a ton of stuff in there. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I, I know you probably feel the same way I do. Like I got this little note from, from one of our B-schoolers, and I know we receive it a lot. They're like, Marie, you read a lot of books. I'm like... Books are like my gateway to the world. That's how I feed my brain. That's why I get so excited and I'm so happy you wrote a book. I remember when I first heard about this deal a little while ago, I was like, yay, Nick, your work is just so, so important. And I'm, I'm thrilled that it's going to get out there to so many more people. So uh, again, for everyone watching, highly, highly recommend this. One of the things I also really appreciate, appreciate about tapping is that when you learn it, you can do it with someone is, you know, it, that's amazing, but it's also something that you can do on your own and really yeah. take the power back and take control. It's one of those healing modalities that, you know, you don't need to necessarily go book a session with someone. Not that that's a bad idea. Yeah. It's awesome. But if you find yourself in a pinch, you have these tools within you. And I think that's so, so incredible. It's huge. I think both are great. I mean, I still work with other people because it's helpful to get that insight. Yes. But you're right, to pull that power back, you know, we, we have a tendency to just put our power everywhere else. Like, this person needs to fix me. Like, whether it's a doctor, a psychologist, a coach, it's like, I need to go to them. Yeah. Pull that power back, it's just incredible. Yeah, really, really cool. So, as you guys know, um, with Marie TV, we always like to challenge you to not only listen to this incredible insight and be inspired, but actually take action and start to put that action and the insight into the comment area. So here's Nick and Mai's challenge for you today. So the first thing we want to hear about, again, in the comments below, we'd love to hear what's the one area that you feel stress? Maybe it's an incident, maybe it's a thought, or maybe it's a general zone of your life. Be very, very specific, right? You've got to name it to claim it and start to work on it and start to heal it. So that's um, challenge number one. Number two, where exactly do you feel that stress in your body? And if you were, like Nick said before, if you were going to give it a score, intensity, 1 to 10, 10 being the most intense, right, what would that be? So where is it located and what would it be? And then finally, we're going to ask you to do 5 to 10 minutes of tapping on it, just like we did here. So tap on it 5 to 10 minutes and then come back and let us know how you feel. And of course, if you already have experienced tapping and you just want to go crazy and let us know how much you love it or anything else that you want to share, of course, we would be happy to see that as well. So Nick, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you, Maria. It's so much fun. It's yeah, a this is the best. I can't wait to do more. So for all y'all, if you like this video, like it subscribe and of course share it with your friends and if you want even more awesome resources to create a business and a life that you love plus some personal insights from me that I only talk about in email get your buns over to marieforleo.com and sign up for email updates until then stay on your game keep going for your dreams because the world needs that special gift that only you have thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time on Marie TV bye everybody bye Nick bye What's up, hey, man? Jeff. What's going on? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. How's the neck? That's what I like to see. <laughs>